Hello everyone, CJ here. This time, we are going to cover the final class of the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons class guide series. Paladins are usually depicted as the unfaltering warriors of good, enemy of all evil, and that annoying boy or girl scout who always poo-poo your party's cunningly devious plan. But do you have to play your paladin as the lawful good beacon of moral righteousness all the time? Well, that's a good question. We will find out after the intro. In the previous editions of Dungeons & Dragons, Paladins had to worship deities, and their alignment is restricted to lawful good or the same alignment as the gods they worship. But in 5th edition, there are no alignment or religious restrictions. Paladins are only bound by the oaths they commit themselves to. Even if the ultimate goal of their adventure is to gain something as unworthy as fame and adoration, they have nothing to worry about as long as it does not conflict with a set of oaths tied to their archetype, such as honesty and courage. Paladins who break that oath can seek absolution from clerics of the same faith or other paladins of the same order. Failing that, they can perform an act of self-denial, such as fasting or praying all night to atone for their misdeed. Paladins who deliberately break their oath without showing remorse may even be forced to abandon the class or become an oathbreaker paladin. But there is no written rule on how bad your paladin can be before they flunk the class. This is left to the dungeon master's discretion, so you better ask what sort of shenanigan you're allowed to get away with before your DM fires you from being a paladin. With great power comes great responsibility. The oath-bound roleplay requirement is the price you have to pay for playing this powerful class. The paladin won't be able to pick their sacred oath until level 3, but even at level 1, they should already be upholding the oath they aspire to take up. This serves as a guide for their behavior. In combat, paladins are great defenders and amazing single-target damage dealers. They can deal enormous amount of burst damage with their smites and take out enemies quickly to change the tide of the battle from the outset. Not only that, they can also take on some healing, supporting, and social interaction roles powered by their class features and spells. Even with their base feature, they are already near perfect, but choosing certain sacred oaths make them excel at certain areas. There are three sacred oaths or archetype for paladins in the player's handbook. Oath of Devotion gives them a balanced set of attack and support features. Paladins who have taken up this oath have easier time dealing with undead and fiends. Oaths of the ancient paladins are defense-oriented, especially against damage from spells. They are also quite effective at going up against fey and fiends. Oaths of Vengeance Paladins are offense-oriented and are great at going against single targets. It's not uncommon for them to be the one who deal the most damage to enemy bosses. For this video, I will be covering the Oath of Devotion. So let's look at the class more closely by moving on to the class basics. The Paladin's hit dice is 1d10, which is larger than most classes. Without any modifier bonus or penalties, they start with 10 hit points and gain the average of 6 hit points per level. They are proficient with all armor, which means heavy, medium, and light armor, and shield. They are also proficient in simple and martial weapons. Generally, they are almost proficient with everything on the weapon and armor list. They have saving throw proficiency in wisdom and charisma, making it easier for them to resist mind control and banishment spells and effects. They can also choose two class skills from the list here. Because the Paladin is a hybrid class, they don't start with spellcasting ability, but at level 1, they get the following. Divine Sense. This is the Paladin's radar. As an action, they can sense the location of any celestial, fiend, or undead within 60 feet of them that's not behind total cover. They can differentiate which ones are celestial, fiend, or undead, but not its identity. So they wouldn't know if it's a lich or just a zombie. Within the distance, they can also detect the presence of any place or object that has been consecrated or desecrated, as with the Hello spell. This feature can be used 1 plus the Paladin's Charisma modifier times. They regain all expended uses after a long rest. Because of the way this feature is described in the player's handbook, many players often think that it lets the Paladin sense the presence of someone with evil alignment. But this feature does not work like that. It just tells the Paladin the creature's type. Paladins also start with the Lay on Hand feature, which gives them a pool of healing power that allows them to heal Paladin level times 5 hit points. They can use their action to heal their target any amount that's available from their pool, 2, 4, or even 100 at level 20. 
Alternatively, they can choose to spend 5 points from the pool to heal target of one disease or neutralize one poison affecting it. They can also cure multiple disease and poison from the target with the same action by expending 5 points for each disease or poison. At level 2, they get to choose a fighting style. But unlike fighters, they have less style options. Defense increases armor class while they are wearing armor. Dueling is a compromise between defending and damage dealing. Great weapon fighting statistically improves the damage of heavy weapons and protection allows the paladin to protect their allies better with their shield. At this level, they also get their spell slots and can cast spells. Paladins use charisma as their spell casting ability and their spell casting mechanics is similar to the clerics except that they don't learn any cantrips. They know all the spells in the paladin spell list, but they need to prepare and memorize spells before they can cast them. The number of spells they can prepare is their charisma modifier plus half the paladin's level rounded down. And those spells must be of the level they have spell slots for. They can change the list of their prepared spell after the end of long rest by spending one minute for every spell level for each spell on the new list. It means that they will have to prepare all the spells even if they have only changed one. At level 3, when they choose their oath, they also get extra set of spells associated with the oath they choose. Those are prepared at all time and doesn't count against the normal number of spells they can prepare. But as you can see here, being a hybrid class, they don't get level 9 spell slots. Their highest spell slot level is only level 5 and their spell slot progression is only half of a full spell caster's. A full spellcaster like the cleric get their level 3 spell slots at level 5, but for paladins it would be at level 9. Paladins can't cast ritual spells and they use holy symbols as their spellcasting focus. Which is great, because holy symbols can be attached to shields, in turn making their shields their spellcasting focus too. Check out the class feature and spellcasting video if you need general information on spellcasting. If spellcasting isn't really your thing, the Paladin can also expand their spell slot for their Define Smite feature. Whenever they hit a creature with their melee weapon attack, they can spend a level 1 spell slot to deal extra 2d8 of radiant damage on top of the weapon's normal damage. If they spend a higher level spell slot like level 2 spell slot, it becomes 3d8. The number of d8 damage dice increases by 1 for every spell level above level 1 up to the maximum of 5d8. If the target is an undead or a fiend, they deal extra d8 of damage. At level 3, paladins get the divine health feature, making them immune to disease. This feature is only relevant in certain scenarios and only protects the paladin against a few disease-oriented spells like contagion. It is not spectacular, but it's still better than nothing. This is also the level at which they pick their oaths. The player's handbook has three options, and for this class guide, I will choose the Oath of Devotion. The Vosian Paladin need to follow these tenets. Honesty, courage, compassion, honor, and duty. Violating any of these tenets requires the Paladin to do penance in one way or another. If the Paladin is not repentant, then the DM might use their discretion to force the Paladin to abandon the class. The Oath gives the Paladin different set of bonus spells, which they have prepared at all time. They will acquire them upon reaching the relevant level. They also get the channel divinity feature and get two different channel divinity options. They can use either of these once between short or long rest. By using the action, the sacred weapon channel divinity option lets the paladin imbue their weapon with positive energy. For one minute, the weapon becomes magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance. It will emit bright light for 20 feet radius and dim light for another 20 feet beyond that. And they can add their charisma modifier to their attack roll. This effect can be ended using any other action, or end automatically when the paladin is no longer holding or carrying the weapon or when they fall unconscious. The turn the unholy channel divinity option allows the paladin to use that action to show that holy symbol and speak a prayer to censure the dead. Any fiend and undead that can see or hear the paladin within 30 feet will have to make their wisdom saving throw against the paladin's spell save DC. If they fail, they get turned for one minute. If they take damage, the effect will end early. Current creature must spend their turn moving as far away from the paladin as possible and can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet from the paladin. It can't take any reaction and for that action, they can only dash to move away from the paladin or dodge if they have nowhere else to run. At level 4, they get their first ability score improvement. Level 5, they get extra attack, allowing them to attack twice on their turn. The attacks can be done separately to different targets. They can also prepare level 2 paladin spells like Branding Smite. 
at level 6, they get Aura of Protection. While conscious, the Paladin and any friendly creature within 10 feet get bonus to their saving throws equal to the Paladin's Charisma modifier. The range of the Aura increases to 30 feet at level 18. At level 7, Devotion Paladin gets Aura of Devotion. While conscious, the Paladin and any friendly creature within 10 feet can't be charmed. The range of the Aura increases to 30 feet at level 18. Level 8, we get their second ability score improvement. Level 9, Paladins don't get any new features, but they can now prepare level 3 spells like Elemental Weapon. At level 10, they get Aura of Courage. While conscious, the Paladin and any friendly creature within 10 feet can't be frightened. The range of the Aura increases to 30 feet at level 18. At level 11, Paladins get improved Divine Smite. Without having to spend any spell slot, their melee weapon attacks deal extra D8 of damage. They can still add their usual Divine Smite feature on top of it, making them tremendously little melee strikers. Level 12, Third Ability Score Improvement Level 13, Paladins don't get any new feature, but they can now prepare level 4 spells like Staggering Smite. At level 14, with Cleansing Touch, Paladins can use that action to end one spell on themselves or a willing creature they touch. This feature can be used for the Paladin's Charisma modifier number of times and is recharged after a long rest. Level 15 Devotion Paladins get Purity of Spirit and is under the effect of protection from evil and good spell at all times. It means that creatures with Aberration, Celestials, Elementals, Fey, Fiend, and Undead typing attack the Paladin with disadvantage, and the Paladin can't be charmed or frightened or possessed by them. At level 16, Paladins get their fourth ability score improvement. Level 17, reaching the epic tier, Paladins don't get any new features, but they can now prepare level 5 spells like Destructive Wave. Just in case you are confused about the name of this spell, it is misprinted in some pages of the PHP as Destructive Smite. The errata has clarified that the name of this spell is Destructive Wave. At level 18, the Paladin's various auras improve and their range extends to 30 feet. Level 19, they get their 5th and last ability score improvement. Finally, at the maximum level of 20, Paladins get their most powerful oath feature. Devotion Paladins can use that action to activate that Holy Nimbus feature. For one minute, an aura of sunlight emanates from the Paladin and sheds bright light for 30 feet and dim light for another 30 feet. Any enemy creatures starting their turn in the bright light take 10 radiant damage. While the aura is active, the Paladin have advantage on saving throws against spells cast by fiends and undead. Once used, this feature is reusable after a long rest. And that is your 20 levels of Paladin. The Paladin is generally a powerful class, and their melee attack is devastating. Their range attack on the other hand is mediocre because they can't activate their smites with them. Different oaths specializes the Paladin on different functions. As we have seen, the Devotion Paladin have a balance of defensive and offensive features. They are also great for fighting undeads. Oaths of the Ancient Paladins have more defensive features and they are great for going up against the Fae. Lastly, Oaths of Vengeance have more offensive features and it's great for going against single targets. When you take out the biggest monster in the room all by yourself in two turns, that's going to dramatically change the tide of the battle. Paladins are also quite useful in social situations because they have various spells such as Zone of Truth and Charisma is their favorite ability. On top of that, they can also heal. What else can they do? It's virtually the near-perfect class. But still, some unsophisticated players who can't see the obvious superiority of the Paladin may want to multi-class. Seriously, Paladins can benefit by multi-classing with various classes. Martial classes such as Fighters, Barbarians, and Rogues are viable options and can enhance the Paladin's battle prowess in various ways. The Rogue's expertise can also help with social situations too, by doubling their persuasion proficiency. Sorcerers and Bards are great for spell slot sources if the Paladin need more fuel for their Divine Smite feature and Hexblade Warlocks make a deadly multi-classing combination with the Paladin. But unfortunately, they are only available in the Xenotar's Guide to Everything Sourcebook. The same classes can also get some benefit by multi-classing as Paladin. The major benefits are the Armor Proficiency and Lay on Hand Healing feature that can come in really handy in many situations. In return for playing the powerful Paladin class, players are often expected to behave a certain way. 
It might be a bit difficult to get used to at first, but you would have an easier time playing the Paladin if you considered their old tenets as part of the character's personality. On the other hand, overzealous players can easily disrupt the party's plans and inhibit the adventure's progress. Admonishing the rogue for stealing and revealing all the party members' lies is only funny for the first couple of sessions. After that, it can get really tiresome. Consider coordinating with other party members so that your paladin is not in the room when they are doing something that violates the paladin's talent. This is a social game after all, so try to consider other players' experience. Also, let me remind all of you paladin players out there, forcing others to follow your tenet is not part of the oath requirement, so don't get too caught up doing it. Alright, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching the last DND 5e class guide. If there is anything here that you don't understand, you can always rewatch the Learn How to Play Dungeons and Dragons series or ask in the comment section. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell button so that you can return for the other classes or future videos by yours truly. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter to get notified on future releases and thanks to all my patrons at Patreon for helping to make this series possible. If you like my work and want to help the channel, please consider becoming a patron. CJ, over and out.